for your love and good wishes.
advised. I'm abridged. Royal rule of anyone who approaches the king in his court without an invitation will be put to death. Security reasons, you understand. And you think these rules apply to me? Surely you jest. Do I look, do I look like a court jester to you? And my name's not Shirley. <laughs>
and send messengers to post the decree. Then read it and weep, Mordecai. <laughs> Oh God, I know your decision is from your hand, but I beg you not to forsake your children. Mordecai, what's wrong? Haman has written this decree ordering that all God's children are to be killed on the 13th of Adar. All of God's children are to be killed on the 13th of Adar? This is terrible. Help us, Lord. Oh, Xerox, have you heard the terrible news? Heard it? I had to write it. Can Queen Esther help us? Only if she reveals the true identity. Then she'll be killed with the rest of us. Oh, Mordecai. What will we do? Our book says the king's heart is like channels of water in the hands of the Lord. He turns it wherever he wishes. Susan, take this decree to Esther and ask her to beg the king's mercy for God's children. But the Persian law says that anyone who approaches a king without invitation will be put to death. Even Queen Esther. And make sure she reads this note from the cousin Mordecai. God be with you. What? Oh, thanks. <coughs> State your name. And purpose. <laughs> For entering the. Oh, sorry, Zerox. I didn't see your press pass. And who's your lady friend? She's a Susan with the delivery for the queen. I see. Is it a present? Something like that. Then you may present your present to the queen. I made it up myself. <laughs> you surely are clever. See <laughs> the queen. But my name's not Shirley. <laughs> Susan, what will you tell the queen? I'll tell her what she wants to tell me.
day I will stand before the king. Until then, we will pray that God will turn the king's heart in our favor. Will you pray for me, Xerox? Well, I never thought much about God, much less about praying. But I sure like you, Queen Esther. So for your sake, I'll pray. Thank you. Now all of you, go quickly. <coughs> And so God's children fasted and prayed. And on the third day, Esther was to approach the queen, the king, as, as noted by... Zero, no. when you enter the court, can you get a message, a message to Esther? Sure, Mordecai. What is it? Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 6. What's that? It's a promise from our book. Is 
sister still alive? Yes, yes. Did the king ask for her request? Yes. Yes. Did she ask him to spare us? No. No. Esther invited the king and Haman to a banquet today. And when he asked for her request, she, Esther, invited them to, Esther invited them again tomorrow. She's wasting time, Mordecai. We need to act now. Thirteen of them are feet. That's what we She should be pleading, not eating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what is she waiting for? For God, who might want her to wait until the eleventh hour of the thirteenth day of the twelfth month. What do you mean, Mordecai? Eleven, twelve, thirteen? My children, God is not on our timetable, or Haman's, or anyone else's. God is not in a hurry, because God is God.
people? Your people? Say what? This decree says that all God's children are supposed to be put to death on the 13th day of Adar. Your Highness, I beg you to reconsider. I didn't write this. Who did it? Who? Who? It was Haman.
for now. Well, for now. That's the place that's the story on the royal record. But don't you think we should record it in your book, Mordecai? Well, there's no doubt that Esther's faith is noted right up there with that of Joshua, the judges, Ruth, Samuel, Ezra, and Nehemiah. Oh, cousin Mordecai, it wasn't me. It was God who was with me. Oh, for now, we've got the whole scoop on Esther and everything God has done. <laughs>